Welcome to the Low Carb USA podcast, where we seek to inspire you to help us build this community. I'm Doug Reynolds. And this is Pam Devine. So we're here with Andrew Berger, and um, we met him for the first time. He was an attendee at our conference just gone by now in in San Diego. And um, listening to him, he's got a fascinating story, type 1 diabetic, and he's actually just um, started a, a thing where he uh, he wants to get this message out on social social media, and he's adopted the handle Type One Burger, mm-hmm. um, which was actually suggested by Ken Berry, right? Um, That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Doug, for having me. Um, I met again. I met Doug at Low Carb USA, and just told him a story and a question and answer, and I got an applause, and here I am now. And I'm again. Thank you for having me. So I was a pretty sick type one diabetic. I didn't know it, but I was always in the 200s, the 300s, the 400 levels of um, my blood sugar. And throughout the years, doctors always said, oh, just give insulin, you can eat whatever you want. And I noticed I was just gaining weight since I was the age of 13, or t- even maybe before then, maybe 12 years old. And throughout my whole adulthood, um, I've been pretty heavy with high blood sugars, eating a terrible diet. I don't, I don't even want to call it the standard American diet because binge eating three bags of family size chips from stress <laughs> from is not is, a standard American diet. Yeah. Though. That's just the shit diet. <laughs> Sorry. Excuse my language. Um, I curse cause it gets the point across more. <laughs> um, but it was so bad. I was so sick. And I actually loved the job I was doing. And it would stress me out. I just, because I couldn't have proper control of my, my life. And I was starting to go to the gym about a year ago now, around this time, August. And I got bored of the music I was listening to. I was doing the same um, elliptical workout every single day weighing myself every single day to see a point one of a pound maybe go down <laughs> or yeah. up it would never really work and i just ended up finding a fitness podcast and some guy saying you know i'm gonna eat two pounds of steak today i was like what this guy out of his mind. eggs with the yolks <laughs> chicken with the skin on it and i was like i might have to try this and I knew of keto. I knew a friend that was um, doing keto, but I didn't really understand it. And so I started going on a ketogenic diet without really even knowing I was doing a ketogenic diet. I was actually on Weight Watchers for the third time. I've been dieting since I was born. I feel like it was like at 18 in college, I gained the freshman 15 and I did the freshman 50. And, um, I was on Weight Watchers. I lost. I ended up losing about 40 pounds on Weight Watchers, but I gained it all back plus 15 more because I was. it's a starvation diet. Mm. You know, you're always competing against the 27 points that you could, or whatever amount of points they give you. And I was starving. There was times I would eat one small salad a day. Yeah, I lost 50 pounds and I looked good, but mentally, physically, I was dying. And, um, again, so back about just about a year now, um, I went on Weight Watchers and I lost maybe five pounds, but it was like the, the hardest five pounds I had to ever lose. Like it, it was, it was impossible. I lost five pounds. I was working out to lose 50 and it was not working out for me at all. And, um, so I started, you know, putting heavy cream in my coffee and eggs and no whites, just the yolks and having steak at breakfast. And I was definitely overeating. Once they said I could eat fat, I was like, just I'll chug it. And, um, but you were reducing carbohydrate consumption was, at the same time. Oh yeah, time. I was down to like 15 or 20 carbs a day. Okay. And which is a major I mean I've never done that. So going down to 20 carbs a day was just it was mind-boggling and 
three months later, I go to my, uh, my doctor, my endocrinologist. Now, mind you, my appointment in July of 2018, I had a 7.8 A1C. I was recently diagnosed with something called uh, non-peripheral non diabetic retinopathy. I can't even get the name. It's it's you hear the name, you're already like basically what you've heard of life, right? Yeah. And uh, there's hemorrhages in my eyes. Mm -hmm. And I'm 28. Doctor tells me he's like Andrew, if you don't shape up, you know you're gonna go blind in just five years. He goes, I know people that that do that. They go blind or they get on top of this and they've never been better. And I said to myself, I gotta get better. I gotta be the better. I got, I'm always the person that tries to persevere, uh, for lack of a better term. And I still didn't, it took me a while to understand what the hell shape up was. I was really lost. Like I had no idea what to do. Like mm -hmm. someone could tell you, like I wanted to shape up, but I didn't know what that really meant. And, um, I go back to my doctor in October and he just goes, he forbade him goes, what the hell are you doing? This is amazing. Hmm. I had a 7.8 A1C, got it down to a 5.3 A1C in three, three months. Wasn't even six months, wasn't a year, three months. The next day I went to, I do my doctor's appointments in a row. I go to the, I go to the, um, the retina, uh, the retinologist. I think that's retina. That sounds about right. Um, <laughs> And he was like, at first when I saw him in January of 2018, he said, I need to see you once a year. Then he goes, you know what? Let's make it six months. And he looking literally in, in a sentence, he goes, you know what? Let's make it three months. I go back October of 2018, about uh, 10 months later. And he says, dude, this is incredible. Like you're out, you don't need to come back as often. Wow. And that was only in the three months of work. It was 10 months since I saw him, but it was only three months of, or two months of being on the, the diet. It, it, was, it was really insane. It was like, I changed a whole way of, of eating, but I changed all of my medicine. I went from 120, about 120 units a day. There would be days I only had, had to take 90, 100 units, but on most occasions, 120 units a day. And now I'm taking uh, 14.9. I look today. I look every day. I'm like, did it go down? Did it go down? It, it okay, but I, I, I have to call you on that because oh. there, there's a reason that it's, it's down even further. So, oh, yeah, please. So it got down to about 26, right? You were saying? Uh, when I first met you a Up until month like ago, you, right. it was like at 26 units a day. Down from 120. 120. Wow. Okay. That's, which is. Yeah it's just freaking incredible on Thank its own you. but now it's down to 14 so explain to us the the difference between a month ago and now what so happened? there's this crazy guy <laughs> named dr ben who i met at low carb usa and you know we're all we're, we're all, we all think we have to go to the gym five days a week six days a week work out for an hour and your favorite part of the gym is leaving <laughs> And um, here's this guy saying, look, just work out twice a week for 15 minutes a day. And, I, you know, the first thing you say to yourself is, what is he selling me? Because, right. you know, the whole fitness industry is based off of a product, the mm -hmm. ab roller, the this, the that. And I bought his book. And within the, f I called Dr. Ben a week later. And I said, I've already seen three pounds, uh, three inches off of my stomach at that time. A week later means you've done. I did two, two, I did two workouts. Two workouts that are 30 minutes total of the two workouts together, 15 minutes each. And I like to be like, the great thing is I like to walk a lot. And I wasn't doing that because I had to go to the gym for an hour a day, lifting weights and doing a push pull legs routine. Mm -hmm. And he, I got to go back to just walking every day. And the days I work out, 15 minutes a day. And now I'm down six inches off of my waist in five weeks. And so that's I'm, effectively 10 workouts, right? 10 or 15, workouts. In, 15 yeah. minutes. Yeah. Each. Today, 
completed um, was the five week, the first five wow. weeks. And he always talks about, you know, give it five weeks. Well, in a week I saw results, but now five weeks later, I've seen 13 pounds down, about 13 pounds down, six inches. And it's like, and I'm seeing some muscles already. And, and your insulin. Oh, it's down another down eight, to 14. eight units. Yeah. And I'm probably going to be going down another, I can feel it going down another two units by the end of this next week. And two units might not sound like a lot. A unit might not sound like a lot. Over a 24 hour period, the doctors are usually like, you don't understand how much a 0.5 of a difference is. So could you imagine going down two units in the week? Yeah. It's, yeah. Crazy. It's, your ins my insulin sensitivity has gone through the roof and that's obviously the good, the good one. You don't want resistance. Um, my sensitivity has gone so up. I mean, there was times I was taking 25 units for one meal. It'd be a high car pizza, like, you know, pizza party. And I wanted every slice like everybody else. Because again, going back, my eye doctor in New York said, um, it's, this is the disease that, no one ever feels you don't see the change you don't see the changes you don't mm -hmm. see you know it's it's not like you don't you know and knock on wood and i'm i have both legs it's just that i look the same but you don't because you, all those things play you know play to your advantage you don't make these food you know you think you can make the same food choices as everybody else and, and you can't you really can't yeah so so um, that's pretty amazing. So where, where, where do you see it going from here? Okay, in terms of your personal, uh, what's the word, improvement? Um, because I don't, you feel like there's still some weight to lose and you yeah. want to get down to what, what typically, what do you, what, what's ideal for you? Where do you um, think, where do you, where do you want to end up? I don't really have, a number i think we're too fi fixated on it i do love seeing this i i do it's terrible i look at the scale every day <laughs> and it's not like there's days i'm just like man like it didn't go down but really like i i see an improvement every single day no matter what it whether it's a scale or it's um you know i just see I, yeah like yeah. i went and just uh in a year i almost i took a break for a little bit i'll, I'll you know and it makes it even a better story. I took a break between February and April from this and I was sick again. And that was before you came to the conference. In yeah. July, oh yeah. Right? Yeah. Way. Yeah. And, um, since April I've gone down four belt pole, poles. That's yeah. yeah. And so for me, it's like, I actually might have to get a new belt this week cause I need another hole and, it's an older belt. I'm like, do I get a new hole punched in or do I get a new belt? <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I lost four belt loop holes. I, I feel like a uh, different person. And now my whole thing is my future. I, yeah, I want to lose. I want to, I would like to get lose all the fat. So my sensitivity goes down to like, sorry, sorry my sensitivity goes all the way up. So I can only get like five units a day. That right. would be my ultimate goal. If I can basically be non-diabetic. I mean, you live with this disease forever, but this is, but this is the, this five is, units is like the minute is like, an, it's a, nothing. It's a minimal. I mean, there's, trip, there's just trip, right? tiny, right. tiny trouble. So, um, and really my ultimate goal is to start teaching people. You okay. Know? So I really want to, um, so have you started doing that yet? Or? Yeah, I, I start, because of Ken Berry's uh, suggestion of my name, I started an account, Type One Burger, on Twitter. I'm starting a YouTube channel. I'm going to start a YouTube channel. Um, I actually have a YouTube channel. I have an Instagram. Um, it's going to take some time to build up, but that's the real goal is just to really teach people. And I mean, I know Ben and Jeff have that. Program. Yeah, and so so especially on Twitter, um, if people want to want to learn more and maybe get involved in the conversations yeah. and maybe even those conversations will help you yeah. work out what direction you really want to go in terms of teaching people. Yeah. So we can encourage people if they're listening to this to, to look you up on Twitter and, yeah, and, and engage you in some conversations and ask you yeah, please, somebody give you an idea what, what you need to teach people. Absolutely. Somebody okay. wrote to me on a direct message on Twitter or type one diabetic and it's like, how are you doing it? And um, what are your tips? And I, 
they ask me a lot of questions and like, I'm sorry for asking all those questions. You can't ask enough questions in my opinion. And that's how this whole community is. Everybody wants to help. You know, I, I work in the music industry where nobody wants to help. And then you go to this and everyone's like, they got, they're ready to give you hugs. So it's all about teaching. And um, that, that's the next, that's the hyper focus. Like once I get to a, per, you know, I feel good right now to start that learning process to start teaching, but that's, I don't, I don't, the, the people that do best in this business are the ones that don't want to make money. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't care to make a dime. My money maker is by just seeing people win. That makes me right. happy. So you paint it forward, basically. Yeah, that's, that's all I want. That is do. so cool. Um, so yeah, to, again, once again, type one, T-Y-P-E. T-Y-P-E, number one, burger, spelled B-E-R-G-E-R, -E -E for my last name is burger. Right, so it's spelled, it's not, it's not, yeah, not the burger like a patty. I know. I love hamburger. But it's a play on words, right? <laughs> okay, brilliant. Well, thank you very much for the time for, uh, for doing this with us. And um, we look forward to working with you more as, as you yes. maybe, you know, we can bounce, bounce stuff off each other in terms of, because we're all about educating people as well. It's so the only way we can progress we can in this right. industry. And we look forward to seeing you at another event, man. Yeah, I can't. I already bought my, my I bought my carnivore ticket. Uh, uh, right. Uh, okay. So you bought the, the carnivore meals and everything. Yep. Up front. I'll be there already. Perfect. I bought it on the Sunday. All right. Well, <laughs> if we don't see you down here in Coronado, well, uh, before that, we'll yeah. uh, we'll see you then for sure. Yeah. No, thank you for awesome. the hospitality. So you'll notice that we haven't had any commercials at all during this podcast, and we we intend to keep it like that if we possibly can. But at the same time, the the work that we're doing and the efforts that we're going to to get the clinical guidelines done, uh, there's just so much to do. And in order to really, for this to be sustainable, um, we need your help. And so uh, what we're asking you to do is go and take a look at our, at our Patreon account. It, it, there's actually quite a few options there. There's, it, it provides you with options to actually go onto our site and there's membership options there where you can, um, get access to all our video content and, and other, other perks of being a member um, or even just, you know, a, a dollar a month, become, become a patron. And you can find that in, in um, patreon.com slash USA. I'll put it in the show notes and in the episode notes so that you can find it. And um, yeah, help help us to to change the world yeah so i think a lot of people take a look at the um the conference registrations and i think they immediately assume that you know from a distance that these might be money making endeavors that we're doing with these conferences and you know it's hard to admit and it's hard to tell people that we really aren't making any money from these um there all 11 of the events that we've done have not been a profitable endeavor um we've literally had to dip into our credit basically it wasn't anything it wasn't like we actually had a pocket to dip into and put money into we you know we've had to take loans and do and um get a lot of credit for these events so um any little bit that you can help every ticket that's sold every little bit of um a dollar a month in a Patreon account will help us to fund our endeavors and fund our, the programs so that we continue to do some of these other things that are free content. Um, the project management that we're doing on the clinical guidelines will really go a long way.